What if in Revenge of the Sith, Anakin stayed inside the Jedi Temple just like Mace Windu told him to? Not because he wanted to stay there, but because he was forced to. Let's see how that would change things. So in this alternate Star Wars timeline, everything would be the same as it was in the original timeline up until the point where Anakin looks across the Coruscant skyline and ultimately decides to head over to Palpatine's office. So to do that, Anakin would rush over to the nearest turbo lift to leave the central tower atop the Jedi Temple which housed the council chamber. But moments after Anakin got into a turbo lift and started making his way down the spire, he heard what sounded like explosions coming from below. This would naturally confuse Anakin, and as he was trying to process what was going on, Anakin would receive a transmission from Master Shakti who was also inside the temple. And as soon as Anakin answered the transmission, Shakti, without wasting any time, would tell Anakin that the temple is under attack and that multiple explosions have been detected in the upper levels. Shakti would then go on to tell Anakin that Anakin should immediately make his way over to the lower levels and evacuate the temple as they don't know what is going on or how many more explosives have been planted inside the temple. Hearing this, Anakin would tell Shakti that he is on his way to the lower levels and would end the transmission after thanking Shakti. What the hell was going on? That would be the only thought on Anakin's mind at this moment. Had Palpatine done this, had he began his attack on the Jedi, Anakin would wonder. But then Anakin would tell himself that Palpatine would not risk getting Anakin killed. Palpatine, or Darth Sidious, wanted Anakin to be his apprentice. So, this was not Palpatine's doing, Anakin would tell himself, even though he wasn't sure. And having told himself that, Anakin would try to regain focus. He needed to get to Palpatine, nothing else mattered. Okay, so let's leave Anakin there for a moment and talk about who exactly attacked the temple here. It wasn't Palpatine like Anakin thought, instead it was Captain Rackham Seer, who was a member of the CIS or the Confederacy of Independent Systems, or the Separatists. So in the original timeline in 19 BBY, prior to the events of Revenge of the Sith, which also happens in 19 BBY, well anyways, during this time, Captain Rackham, with the help of Bonnie Hunter Cad Bane, obtained detailed schematics of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, and armed with this knowledge, Captain Rackham went to the temple with the ultimate goal of taking down the Central Spire, also referred to as the Tranquility Spire, the biggest of the five towers atop the Jedi Temple, the one where the Council Chamber was housed in. So why and how did Captain Rackham plan to do this? Well, as for how he did it, the captain snuck in through a ventilation shaft of the Jedi Temple, and he did that quite easily too, because apparently, the Jedi, in their arrogance, had barely upgraded the temple security. But regardless, once the captain was far enough into the ventilation shaft, he took out many of these tiny, round explosives and through the ventilation's opening, released them into the temple, which ended up causing multiple explosions throughout the Jedi temple. But these explosions were meant to distract the Jedi, while Captain Rackham made his way over to the temple spire and destroyed it. Or at least, that was his plan. And why did Captain Rackham want to do this? Well, that's because the captain believed that if he managed to bring down that tower, the Republic and Separatists alike will know that neither the Jedi Order nor the Republic is invincible, thus changing the course of the entire war. But ultimately, in the original timeline, Captain Rackham failed to execute his plan because he was stopped by a young Kanan Jarrus, who was known as Caleb at the time, and also his Jedi Master. Deva Balaba. So in the end, Captain Rackham's story in the original timeline came to an end when he jumped up the Jedi Temple to avoid capture, and then blew himself up using his own explosives. But in this new alternate timeline, for whatever reason, Captain Rackham couldn't carry out his attack on the temple until a few months later than in the original timeline. But ultimately, this ended up being a good thing, for the captain at least, mainly because there were fewer Jedi in the temple, and he was able to make his way over to the Tranquility Spire, or the Temple Tower, without being noticed. And so in the end, Captain Rackham made his way over to the temple spire and brought the spire and himself down with his explosives. And now let's get back to Anakin Skywalker. So by this point, Anakin would have made it out of the tower and would now be looking to get to the lower levels and out of the temple. Anakin's mind would still be focused on getting to Palpatine, but again, breaking Anakin's train of thought, he would hear a much louder explosion than before. And following this explosion, Anakin would hear something else. Something that sounded like a large building collapsing on top of the Jedi Temple. And this was of course the sound of the temple spire being brought down by Captain Rackham. His plan, a success. This would naturally distract Anakin, but he would again regain composure and would push on with his mission to get to Palpatine. Anakin would then approach a turbo lift to get to the lower levels and out of the temple, but this turbo lift was not working. The explosions must have caused it, Anakin would tell himself, and at this point, Anakin would again receive a transmission on his comlink, 
Anakin would reluctantly answer, and it was again Master Shock T. Anakin almost wanted to end the transmission right then and there because of how agitated he was, but before Anakin could do so, Shock T would start speaking, and she would tell Anakin that Master Sinube and a group of his students were trapped inside one of the upper levels, and that the training hall they were in was about to collapse on them. Anakin would remain unresponsive, and Shock T would go on to add that he, Anakin, is the closest to Master Sinube, and that Shock T and the others will not be able to make it to Master Sinube in time because of the turbo not working, and that Anakin was the only one who could ensure the survival of Sinube and the younglings. Anakin was to remain unresponsive, he almost wanted to break his calmling into two, because he didn't have time for this, he had to get to Palpatine. But as this thought was going through his mind, Shakti would again tell Anakin that those younglings don't have much time, and that if Anakin does not hurry, they would be crushed. And hearing this, Anakin, with much reluctance, will ask Shakti where the younglings and Master Sinube were trapped in. Anakin does so because he's still a Jedi. He has not turned to the dark side, not in this timeline, not yet. I will quickly get them out of that collapsing hall and then make my way over to Palpatine, Anakin would tell himself. And so having decided that, and with Shakti telling him where exactly he needed to go, Anakin would make his way over to Master Sinube and his students, pushing away every obstacle and debris in his path. And so, no long after, Skywalker would approach this collapsing hall in which Sinube and the younglings were trapped in. And once he got there, Anakin would find a considerable amount of debris blocking the entrance to this hall, but this would prove little challenge to the Chosen One. And so, Anakin would make his way through this debris like a hot knife through butter. And once he got in there, Anakin found Master Sinube and the younglings standing pretty close to the entrance, as if they were trying to clear out this debris from the inside and make their way out of the hall. But Anakin did not have time to inquire about any of that. Instead, immediately after he entered this hall, Anakin would use the force to hold up the collapsing ceiling, and while doing so, Anakin would tell Master Sinube to take the younglings and head to the lower levels. In response, Master Sinube would thank Anakin and would do as Anakin instructed. And once everyone had exited this collapsing temple hall safely, Anakin too would rush out. And he would also stop using the force to hold up the ceiling of this hall. But even after Anakin let go and walked out of the hall, it didn't collapse, which angered Anakin to a small degree, because he realized that he didn't have to stand there holding up the ceiling when everyone walked out. He lost precious time by doing that, Anakin would think, but none of that mattered anymore. And with no more explosions having been heard after the temple spire fell, Anakin would assume that the younglings would be safe and that he didn't have to follow them. And so, Anakin would again start rushing out the temple. He would run past the Anglings and Master Sinube to the nearest turbo lift which was still not working. And so, Anakin is forced to take the temple stairs. But still, soon enough, Anakin would reach the lower levels. And once there, Anakin would find Shock T and some of the other Jedi helping the injured and with evacuating the temple because like I said before, they didn't know if there were more explosives inside the temple, on a timer maybe. But Anakin did not care about any of this. He would run past Shakti and the other Jedi without a word or even acknowledging their presence. Anakin was only focused on finding a speeder and getting to Palpatine. In fact, Anakin was so focused on this that Master Windu had to almost yell into Anakin's ear to get his attention. So now we cut to a while earlier when Mace Windu and the other masters went to confront Sidious. So here, everything will play out just as it did in the original timeline, up until Sidious loses his lightsaber. So side note, there is a lot of debate as to whether Mace Windu actually defeated Sidious. Well, in the DVD commentary for Revenge of the Sith, George Lucas does say that Windu got the upper hand on Sidious. But George Lucas said that in reference to their actual lightsaber duel. Because in his commentary, George Lucas does go on to say that Palpatine is indeed pretending to be weak in front of Mace Windu and Anakin. So I suppose it's safe to say that in terms of force abilities alone, Sidious would have overpowered Windu. And a section of the novel session for Revenge of the Sith actually does back this up. And I will now quickly go over that section of the novel session. Also, this happens when Mace Windu is holding off Sidious' lightning. You're the chosen one, Anakin. Mace said, his voice going thin with strain. This was beyond way bad. He had no strength left to fight against his own blade. So right here, as per the novel Safe of Revenge of the Sith, which George Lucas oversaw, Mace, at this point, when he was holding off Sidious' lightning, could not have done it for much longer. Mace's Way Pad, which was a fighting style that allowed its user to channel the dark side energy of their opponent against themselves, was reaching its limits, meaning Sidious was overpowering Windu. So with that in mind, let's get back to the story. So in this new timeline, as soon as he loses the duel and his lightsaber, 
Sidious would immediately attack Windu with Force Lightning. Anakin doesn't show up, so Sidious has no reason to pretend to be weak. And so, Master Windu would of course block Sidious's lightning with his purple saber. But soon, Windu and Sidious would both realize that Windu wouldn't be able to hold up Sidious for much longer. But fortunately, Master Windu had another unique ability, the ability to see Shatter Points. So what are Shatter Points? Well, as per Star Wars lore, Shatter Points could be anything. It could be a feeling, a belief, an action, an event, an object, or even a person that, no matter how small or insignificant they might seem, had the potential to have a massive impact on the outcome of things. And some of the most powerful Jedi, like Mace Windu, had the ability to see these shadow points and manipulate them in order to generate the most favorable outcome. For example, in Attack of the Clones, Mace Windu does recognize Dooku as a shatter point in reference to the Clone Wars, as in if something were to happen to Dooku, the Clone Wars would never happen. But for a number of reasons, in Attack of the Clones, Mace Windu does not act upon the shatter point. And what were these reasons? Well, in the Star Wars novel Shatter Point, we do see Mace Windu ruminating on this. And the following is Mace Windu's thoughts on why he did not kill Dooku right then and there. But I faced the choice to kill a former Jedi Master, or to save Kenobi and Young Skywalker, and the Senator, I let the Force choose for me. I followed my instincts. I made the Jedi choice. So essentially, Mace prioritized Kenobi, Skywalker, and Padme over killing Dooku. Because that's what the Force told him to do. And yet another example of Shatter Points comes from the novelization for Revenge of the Sith. When Anakin rushes in to Palpatine's office, Mace Windu sees that Sidious's trust in Anakin was Sidious's Shatter Point. Which was true. Sidious relies on his trust in Anakin and pretends to be weak, which ended up causing Anakin to cut off Mace Windu's hand, allowing Sidious to push Windu out the window. So right there, Sidious' stress in Anakin, which was a shatter point, led to the entire fate of the galaxy changing. Also, in case you're wondering why Master Windu could not utilize the shatter point, well, basically, Mace Windu underestimated how badly Anakin wanted Sidious alive. So essentially, the ability to see shatter points were kind of like being able to see the butterfly effect in action how one small action can have massive ramifications. And so with all that in mind, let's get back to the story. So as Mace Windu deflected Sidious's lightning, he soon realized that he wouldn't be able to hold off Sidious for much longer. But at the same time, Master Windu saw in Sidious a shatter point. And the shatter point was a vulnerability in Sidious. This vulnerability was not in Sidious's ability to use the Force, no. It was something else entirely. Overconfidence. That was Sidious's weakness, his vulnerability his shatter point. And so in the absence of Anakin, Sidious's, and in a sense the galaxy's, shatter point had changed. Sidious believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that he had won, that Mace Windu and the Jedi couldn't do anything to beat him. And this overconfidence of Sidious was a shatter point that could change the fate of the galaxy, the Jedi, the Republic, everything Mace Windu realized. And so having sensed this, Master Windu prepared himself to take advantage of the shatter point. And as for Sidious, he was elated at what was happening at this moment. The mighty Mace Windu was about to die by his hand, Sidious told himself. And as Sidious watched, Mace Windu, while blocking Sidious's lightning, began moving around the window that was shattered earlier. And Sidious, of course, followed Master Windu with his lightning. But then, a few moments later, Master Windu stopped, as did Sidious. And then, Master Windu fell to his knees as he utilized every last bit of strength he had to stop Sidious with lightning from reaching his body. This sight was of course amusing to Sidious. One of the best the Jedi Order had to offer was nothing more than a pathetic weakling in front of his powers, Sidious would think. Sidious would then start laughing like a maniac and ask Master Windu if he sees how weak his Jedi Order is. Or at least that's what Sidious wanted to ask because before he could finish the sentence, something happened. So you see, because of Sidious's sour confidence and arrogance, he wasn't paying much attention to his surroundings. Because if he had, Sidious would have noticed that the reason why Mace Windu moved around as he deflected Sidious's lightning was not to try and get away, but instead to position Sidious right in front of the window that Windu had shattered earlier. And on top of that, fully believing that Master Windu was no longer a threat, Sidious actually lowered the intensity of his forced lightning with the intention of giving Master Windu breathing space to realize that the Jedi Order and himself had failed miserably. But unknown to Darth Sidious, Master Windu was expecting Sidious to do something like this. So when Sidious finally reduced the intensity of his attack to gloat at Master Windu, Master Windu was prepared. And the reason why Master Windu had fallen to his knees before Sidious was not fully because of how strong Sidious's Force Lightning was, but it was also to preserve at least some power. Not much, just enough to perform 
a very simple force attack. So when the moment finally came when Sidious dropped his guard, Windu, with the power he had conserved, performed a simple force push which was something Sidious was not expecting, something he wasn't prepared for. And in the end, something that sent Sidious flying out of the window that Windu had shattered earlier. As Sidious fell, Mace Windu did hear Sidious scream for a short moment, only for it to be cut short by wind and distance. The exhausted Mace Windu then fell backwards and found himself on a chair. He would then deactivate his purple lightsaber and allow it to drop from his hand. Mace would feel as though he just ran up a hill while holding his breath. But the only thought that would be present inside Mace's mind would be this. The Sith are gone. Their oppression will never return. The Republic will live on. And that's all that mattered. Mace would then sit there for a long moment, looking at Coruscant, allowing himself to feel the gravity of what he had just done. But soon enough, Master Windu would regain his composure and contact the 187th Legion of Clone Troopers who served under Windu. And shortly thereafter, the 187th would arrive by shuttles and enter Palpatine's office to begin containing the scene and collect evidence, of which there was quite a bit. And also, it would only be now that Master Windu finds out about the attack on the Jedi Temple. And immediately upon learning of this matter, Windu would head over to the temple, worried that the attack may have been Sidious' doing. Upon arriving at the temple, Windu would see many injured Jedi and younglings being evacuated and cared for by medical droids. And then Mace Windu would spot Anakin Skywalker, the Chosen One, running out of the temple. Windu would then approach Skywalker and call out his name, but Skywalker would appear to be in a hurry and wouldn't take note of Windu. Not until Windu got closer and almost yelled Skywalker's name into his ear. Master Windu, Anakin would exclaim, a lot of thoughts would be going through Anakin's mind at this moment. Had Sidious been arrested? Is, is Sidious dead? That's what Anakin would ask Windu, to which Master Windu, without sugarcoating anything, would tell Anakin that Sidious left him no choice. Hearing this, Anakin immediately knew what Master Windu meant, and he would feel defeated. Another person has died, because he couldn't get to them in time. But immediately, Windu would also add that Anakin has earned Windu's trust, and that without Anakin's help, the Sith would not have been defeated so easily. You have my respect. Master Skywalker, we do would say before walking away. As for Anakin, while he was devastated that Sidious was gone, especially since it was he, Anakin, who led the Jedi to Sidious, Anakin would find some newfound hope in Windu's words. Master Windu had addressed him as Master Skywalker. That meant to Anakin that soon enough, he would be given the rank of Master. So side note, in Revenge of the Sith, the reason why Anakin gets so agitated when he is denied the rank of Master is because only Masters are allowed to go into the restricted section of the Jedi Archives. And Anakin wanted to go to the restricted section because he believed that the restricted section of the Jedi Archives could offer him a path to save Padme. So now coming back to the story with that in mind, with Master Windu acknowledging Anakin's status as a master, Anakin would find new hope in being able to save Padme. If there existed a way to save Padme through the Force, he will find that in the Jedi Archives, Anakin would tell himself. He can still save Padme. He doesn't need Sidious. And with that decided, Anakin would go back to the Jedi Temple. So in the days and weeks following the death of Palpatine, many things would happen. But the most prominent would be the Jedi High Council explaining to the Senate and the courts how Palpatine was the Sith Lord Darth Sidious who wanted to destroy the Jedi and take over the Republic. But proving this matter before the Senate would prove a challenge to the Jedi. Because even though they could prove that Palpatine was Darth Sidious and his Sith Lord, the problem was that being a Sith was not illegal in the Republic. It was illegal during the time of the Old Republic, which was a thousand years before the Clone Wars, but that law had since been nullified. And during the time of the Clone Wars, it was completely illegal for one to be a Sith. So side note, to avoid any confusion about this, the novel session for Revenge of the Sith does touch on the fact that being a Sith was not illegal. Because in the novel session, there is a scene where an audio recording of Sidious speaking with Windu and the other masters, as they came to arrest him, are released to the public. To make it seem like the Jedi had indeed tried to commit treason. And in this audio recording that Sidious released to the citizens of the Empire, we get the following exchange between Windu and Sidious. Miss Windu, you're a Sith Lord. Palpatine, am I? Even if true, that's hardly a crime. My philosophical outlook is a personal matter. In fact, the last time I read the Constitution anyway. We have very strict laws against this type of persecution. So I ask you again, what is my alleged crime? How do you expect to justify your mutiny before the Senate? Or do you intend to arrest the Senate as well? So right there, it's clear that being a Sith itself was not illegal. But even though being a Sith was legal, pretty much everything else that Palpatine did, most prominently orchestrating the Clone Wars, was very much illegal. All the Jedi had to do was prove it. Which would prove to be a difficult task, given how Palpatine was respected and loved by the citizens of the Republic. Most of the Republic, senators included, viewed Chancellor Palpatine as a bold man, 
who stood for justice and freedom. So to convince them otherwise, the Jedi needed strong evidence. There was of course the three Jedi Masters that Palpatine had killed. But given how the Jedi did not immediately present strong evidence, proving that Palpatine was behind the Clone Wars, many senators would argue that Palpatine was simply trying to defend himself when he took down three Jedi Masters. Again, Palpatine had some very strong supporters in the Senate. We even get a hint of the support in Revenge of the Sith. When Anakin tells Obi-Wan that the reason Palpatine had stayed in office for as long as he did was because the Senate demanded that Palpatine stay in office long past his term. So suffice to say, these senators had a very high degree of trust in Chancellor Palpatine. So again, at this point, what the Jedi needed to convince all the senators of Palpatine's wrongdoings was strong evidence. And evidence would come in the form of Darth Maul and Ahsoka Tano. And after some convincing by the Jedi, Maul would take the stand in the Senate and explain to the senators that he, Darth Maul, was once apprentice to Darth Sidious. And that Darth Sidious, or Palpatine, was a Sith who wanted to take over the Republic and destroy the Jedi Order. But still, unfortunately for the Jedi, Many senators would not see Maul as a credible witness, and some would even argue that Maul was paid off by the Jedi to lie before the Senate, and that Maul was nothing more than a liar who's doing all of this for credits. Hearing one of the senators stand up and say this would anger Maul, and in his anger, Maul would call upon the Force and begin strangling the senator that said this. At which point, Maul would immediately be stunned and taken away, so ultimately, Maul's testimony would not help the Jedi to a great degree, mainly because no one knew who Maul was, and Sidious was careful not to leave any trace connecting himself to Maul. But luckily for the Jedi, there still existed a group of individuals who could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Darth Sidious was indeed behind everything. And these are of course the leaders of the Separatists. Every Separatist leader knew of Darth Sidious, and many of them, like Newt Gunry, had spoken to Sidious on numerous occasions, all the while addressing him as Lord Sidious. And as for getting Newt Gunray or any of the other Separatist leaders to testify in the Republic Senate, that wouldn't prove to be much of a challenge. Because with Count Dooku, Grievous, and now Sidious dying, the Separatist command structure had pretty much been destroyed. And many of the Separatist leaders, including the likes of Newt Gunray, did see that the war was pretty much lost. And Newt Gunray especially, being the Viceroy of the Trade Federation, by this point wanted the war to end and for business to go back to normal. Because ever since this war began, they have been getting hit pretty hard financially. And so when the Jedi, along with senators, the likes of Bail Organa and Mon Mothma, went to Gunray with terms of peace negotiations, Gunray would accept the terms, realizing that he doesn't have much of a choice. And on top of that, Newt Gunray would finally agree to testify before the Senate as to everything he knew about Darth Sidious. So ultimately, Newt Gunray, Viceroy of the Trade Federation, would speak before the Republic Senate as to everything he knew about Darth Sidious, and Gunray would also reveal a great many things to the Senate including the many recordings of follow transmissions that Newt Gunray and the other Separatists had with Darth Sidious. And so, when everything was said and done, the Jedi were able to prove to the vast majority of Senators that Palpatine was indeed Darth Sidious and was playing both sides from the beginning. However, even after all this, many Palpatine loyalists would still not support the Jedi, but they were few in number and wouldn't be able to disprove any of the evidence that the Jedi had presented. So ultimately, the Senate and the courts would order a formal investigation to be held into Palpatine, and they would also rule that, in light of all the evidence that the Jedi had presented, Mace Windu, the other masters, and the Jedi Order were innocent. And now, finally, let's get back to Anakin. So not long after the death of Palpatine, Anakin was formally given the rank of Master. And after he was made a Master, Anakin didn't really care for anything other than acquiring the knowledge to save Padme. And so Anakin pretty much buried himself in research in the restricted section of the Jedi Archives. And soon after, Anakin became obsessed in his research, to the point where even Obi-Wan, who by this point had arrived back in Coruscant, was getting worried. But there was one person who was even more worried about Anakin than Obi-Wan, and that was of course Padme Amidala, Anakin's wife. Anakin barely had any time to spend with her. In fact, Anakin had pretty much locked himself inside the Jedi Temple. In an effort to maybe try and help Anakin, Padme did suggest that she and Anakin go to Naboo, where she wanted to have their child. But Anakin did not agree to this. He would tell Padme that on Naboo, he wouldn't be able to help her. Because on Naboo, Anakin wouldn't be able to access the Jedi Archives. And so as his research went on, Anakin couldn't find anything concrete or direct that would help Padme, much to Anakin's frustration. But as the days went by, one night, Anakin, for a few brief moments, allowed his mind to be free of thoughts, and soon enough, sleep, which Anakin had been avoiding for quite some time now, found him. And in his sleep, Anakin was met with yet another vision. But this one was different. 
This time, he did not see Padme dying in childbirth. Instead, he saw himself instructing two younglings in lightsaber combat, one girl and a boy. But what was confusing about this vision was that Anakin did not see himself training these two inside the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Instead, he saw himself and these children somewhere else. Somewhere much different than the Jedi Temple, but still familiar to Anakin. Anakin would feel that he's been to this place before, but couldn't fully recognize it. And then this vision would end and Anakin would wake up. Anakin would ponder on the nature of this vision. Was it a dream? Was it an actual vision? Anakin wouldn't know. And soon enough, Anakin would ignore this vision completely and bring his focus back into his research. He needed to find a way to prevent Padme's death. But one of the days following this vision, when Anakin was inside the archives, he would receive a transmission on his comm link. It was from C-3PO. Anakin would answer and 3PO would tell Anakin that Padme had been taken to the Grand Republic medical facility and that she wanted Anakin near her. Anakin would of course rush to Padme's side and once there, the medical droids inside the hospital would tell Anakin and the others that were with Padme that Padme had gone into labor. This would scare Anakin. Was his visions about to come true? He didn't know and even if they were coming true, he had no way to prevent them. But even as his mind was filled with stress, Anakin did notice that Obi-Wan wasn't there. Because in his visions, he did see Obi-Wan by Padme's side and here, he wasn't there. But Anakin's mind would not dwell on this for long and he, like Bail Organa and some of Padme's other friends, would wait outside her hospital room as the medical droids took care of her. Anakin of course would be demanding constant updates from the medical droids, but fortunately, no long after offering Anakin relief, the medical droids would tell Anakin and everyone else that Padme had given birth to twins. And as soon as this information reached Anakin's ears, he would immediately ask the droid if Padme was alright, because at this moment he did not care about their children. The droid would tell Anakin that Padme is resting and that they will be able to see her soon enough. But Anakin of course, instead of waiting, would push the medical droid away and walk up to Padme May's hospital bed, where he found her with her eyes closed. This worried Anakin, he would then rush over to her and hold her hands, at which point Padme would gently open her eyes and tell Anakin that she is fine. And so, proving Master Yoda right when he said the future is constantly in motion, in this timeline, the future did change. Padme did not die and Anakin did not become Darth Vader. And so, as the years went on and Luke and Leia turned out to be force sensitive, neither Anakin nor Padme wanted their children to become Jedi because the Jedi were forbidden from having attachments and Padme and Anakin did not want to abandon their children. But Anakin would of course still train his children in the ways of the Force, teaching them everything he knew and he would do so not on Coruscant but on Naboo where Luke and Leia would be raised. So this is what Anakin saw in his visions earlier, him teaching his two children in the palace on Naboo where he and Padme stayed in during the events of Attack of the Clones. And as the years went on, confirming her suspicions, Anakin would tell Ahsoka that Padme's two children were in fact his. It would not surprise Ahsoka one bit. And as for Obi-Wan, well, Obi-Wan always knew. In fact, in the Noble Session for Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan tells Padme that he's not blind and that he's always known of Anakin and Padme's relationship. And he goes on to say that Anakin knew that Obi-Wan knew, but for everyone's sake, both of them just pretended that Obi-Wan did not know. And so, ultimately, in this timeline, there was peace. So that will be it for this fanfiction. I hope you liked it. Also, before you leave, for early access to fanfictions and exclusive bits of content that would not be published on the main channel for months, do check out my Patreon for $1 or more a month. All tiers have the same benefits, early access to videos and access to exclusive content that would not be published on the main channel anytime soon. So if you have the time, do check out my Patreon. Link should be in the description. Anyways, goodbye. I do hope you have a good day or night or evening.